to the point with Congressman Bill Pascrell, focusing on the concerns and issues facing the families of New Jersey's 9th Congressional District. Hello, I'm Congressman Bill Pascrell. I would like to welcome you to this latest edition of To the Point. It has been a custom for presidents to release their tax returns in the name of transparency. Custom that was thrown out the window by this president. Sometimes you forget why customs such as this are in place. Sometimes the history of such practices is forgotten. But my guest today is here to remind us why presidents of both parties have long followed this unwritten rule. University of Virginia law professor George Yin is here with us today. George has been a vocal advocate of congressional review of President Trump's tax returns, an act that doesn't need any presidential approval because there's a provision in the U.S. tax code which allows presidents and congressional committees to look into their tax returns. House Ways and Means Committee, of which I'm a member, the Senate Committee on a Finance Committee, and the Joint Committee on Taxation to request any individual's tax returns for a closed session review. Serving as Chief of Staff of the Joint Committee on Taxation, ironically, in 2003 to 2005, I believe, uh, George is uniquely qualified to offer his opinion on this very, very important matter. George, thank you for being with us today. We're honored thank to you. have you. Thank you, Congressman. So how did you get involved in the subject matter in the first place? Uh, well, it turns out I did some research some, a few years ago on this subject. That the topic that you're describing, which you've been very active on and, and, and really a leader in the House on, uh, is an area of the law that very few people know about. Uh, I happen to know about it because of my research, and when the uh, topic arose early this year with the president's refusal to um, to reveal his tax returns. It seemed to me that that was a good time to 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 explore the issue. And you know, it's been pretty frustrating. I sent my first letter February the first of this year. Uh, we've had uh, many uh, congressional privilege resolutions. Uh, we've had two times within the Ways and Means Committee. They're trying to get congressional inquiry into this, and we have failed each one of those times, which is in no manner, shape, or form indicative of my enthusiasm and hasn't min been minimized at all. Uh, uh, let me ask you this question. Um, we're trying to find a way to do this, a, a nonpartisan way. I, in fact, I asked the chairman, Kevin Brady, of uh, Voice and Means Committee, let's do this together. Because eventually it's going to come out. If we don't force it out, uh, the inquiries that are going on by congressional committees uh, or the FBI or Mr. Mueller, who's head of the investigation right now overall, these are things that they're going to have to look at in order to bring tangible evidence into the play. Now, you've, you, you know basically what I've done over the past several months with, with the help of a lot of people. Where have I gone wrong? Um, I don't really think you've gone wrong. I think, you know, the, the, the reality is you need to get a little bit of Republican support. And though we got very far, little. <laughs> you've gotten a very little bit, but not enough. Yes. Uh, but it does seem to me, if you look at the background of this, this law that, that you're referring to was one that was developed when the White House the House and the Senate were all controlled by Republicans. That's right. And yet despite that, in 1924, when the law was created, enough Republicans joined most of the Democrats then to pass this new law, which again gives Congress the ability to exercise its rights as a co-equal branch right. of government. And that was a result branch. of a scandal, George, right? The scandal of the Teapot Dome, I've talked about it many, many, many times, the nuns pounded into my head. Uh, I didn't see the relevance of to real life when I was doing it, but now I do, unfortunately. Well, that was a, a, a law built into the code, the tax code, because of what had happened in the executive branch of government at that time. People wanted to get their finger, their hand, you know, their fingers greased. People wanted to be part 
of a public domain, which was our oil reserves. And so let's bring in the private sector and we'll have a party. <laughs> I'm exaggerating now, but maybe I'm not. And whether it was Democrat, Republican, people took a piece of the pie and they wanted to do this. The only way that we were able to, the government was able to unfold this scandal was to have to look at people's tax returns to see what money they put into their pockets. It wasn't an attempt to make us snoopers, to look in, into, into private affairs because your tax returns are private. You know, there's nothing private with congressmen. What can I tell you? But that's what the purpose of it was. Doing it a right way, not exposing it unless there was a vote to do that within one of these three committees. And that's where we are right now. We do have the authority. The law is on our side. And what happened in that Teapot Dome scandal? Members of the executive branch of government had direct conflicts of interest. Yeah. They, either, they bought private land, public land that made it private. So they became part of the oil reserves. Correct? Right. Yeah, the, you're exactly right. Certainly What's a the, conflict of interest? Well, the conflict of interest was that there were some executive branch officials that were alleged to have committed these improprieties, and Congress wanted to investigate that. Right. And part of the investigation was to examine their tax returns to see, in fact, what kind of payments they'd received from whom and so forth. And up until then, they couldn't do that. And up until then, they couldn't do it. The only person who could do it in the country up until then was the president. Right. And of course, these are executive branch officials, so the president was not likely to order the disclosure. That's a universal of, conflict. Exactly. Now, it turns out there were actually other reasons why this law came about. Uh, another concern, which is directly relevant to our current situation, was that the Treasury Secretary, Andrew Mellon, at the time was even wealthier than our current president relative to the country at the time and owned many more business interests than our right. current president owned. Right. And Congress was interested to know, well, how are these various proposals, including tax proposals that the Treasury was coming up with, how would they affect uh, Mr. Mellon's business interests? And so that was another reason. I think that's that, a logical question, though, isn't it? Absolutely. Why is that important? Well, it's important because... Why is it important for you to know, for me to know, if there are any potential conflicts existing in your business practices, which may affect your public sector right. practices? Well, because the president, as well as you and every member of Congress, should be acting in, in the behalf of the public interest. That's your part of your sworn obligation. Right. And so knowing what your private interests are gives the public a little bit of insurance or a little bit of question of whether you, in fact, are acting in the public interest. That's the basis of that. Well, the ethics commissioner, Mr. Schaub, as you know him, we all know him now, he recommended when Mr. Trump was elected to the presidency, he recommended that he divest himself, the president, of all business attachments. And, and George, I have in my hands the web of potential conflicts in so many countries, 550, over 550 investments. You know, we go from Argentina <laughs> to Brazil uh, to Russia China, Saudi Arabia, how about, how about in the United States? So, so we have these investments. They're all, you know, hopefully they're all legal. We don't know that. But when you look at, start to look at each one of them, there are questions about who did you do business with? Who were you partners with at a certain amount of time? We say, well, what the heck does that got to do with this gentleman becoming the president of the United States? He's our president. Why are you interested in what his investments are? Well, a president has to make decisions, does he not, George? Right, exactly. Sure. What kind of decisions does the president have to make? Well, all sorts of decisions. He just recently announced, for example, a little bit of a cutback on our relationship with Cuba. And the question is, well, to what extent was that driven by the fact that some of his competitors have business interests in Cuba, but he doesn't. 
And right. so maybe he's kind of tilting the scales a little bit. Again, we don't know. Those are the kinds of things that I think the public has a right to know. And why do they have a right to know that? Well, they have Isn't a right that his private business? Well, but again, he, he is now holding an office to represent the public. He should be acting in the public's interest. Now, I'm thinking about an example. I'm, a, I'm the, the ranking member on trade on the, on the Democratic side, okay? When the president was campaigning and when he was sworn, uh, it talked about really coming down hard, for instance, in the area of trade on China because China is a currency manipulator, maybe a little bit less the last year or so than previous 10 years. Now, all of a sudden, that's out the window. He's no longer talking about looking at China. We do need China's help in many areas, be it Korea, et cetera. They're a trading partner, uh, for better or worse. Uh, but he, he's already taken a back step. Could that have anything to do with the trademarks that are available to his family members? I mean, it's a question I would logically ask, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I can give you another example. As you know, there's a conflict now going on in the Middle East between Saudi Arabia and yeah, Qatar. Yeah, Qatar. And, and, and as it turns out, uh, the president apparently has had some business interests in Saudi Arabia, but not in Qatar. Right. And so then the question is, well, you know, I mean, to what extent should U.S. policy be dictated by his personal connections and right. so forth? Why does he refuse to divest himself of this? And his family members are doing business. Yeah. I mean, his son-in-law is, is going over to the Middle East right. to do the, some negotiations. Yeah. God bless him. He's a smart guy. Well, but why yeah. does that give us get us to pause? Yeah. I, you know, I would say in his defense, some of his interests are hard to divest. Real estate is notably hard to divest. But in fairness, he could develop a pretty safe uh, uh, trust, blind trust, and put his assets in that. Which most uh, presidents have done. Which most presidents have done. And Although that they haven't had this many investments right. all over the world. So he wouldn't have to dis you know, yeah. sell off all of yeah. his interests. He could put it in a blind trust and just you know, ignore them for four years or eight years. And he's years. not giving it away. That's right. He's not giving it away. And he, it, it still is his, but he just doesn't know what's in there and he doesn't know how it's doing and so forth. What about, the, what about his kids and his, his uh, in-laws and outlaws, their relationship to his business practices and their own business practice? They each, they, they each got their own little niche. How could that be in conflict? Well, obviously, you know, you close family members, they have business, private interests and so forth. And again, it, it, it's very complicated because some of them have also are holding positions of public trust and public right. interest themselves, as well as being children of the president. So well, he, sa he says that, well, you guys know what my business interests are on my disclosure, the 278, whatever they have to hand in, besides the 1040. But we're talking about thousands of pages of addendums in your tax return. We're not seeing that. That's not in the disclosure that you've seen, that I've seen, or anybody seen. And my disclosure as a congressman is, is public record. And these are important factors that give us an idea about where you've put your money. Plus, it doesn't tell us about the partnerships or the partnerships that I've gotten out of. So that could be affecting my decisions. And by the way, George, we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about tax reform. We started already in the Ways and Means Committee. I want to know what's being proposed, how it benefits the president or his close donors. I think I have a right to know that, don't you? Yeah, those those are again, you know, the kinds of questions that Congress should should certainly look at to, again, examine to what extent these proposals are in the public's interest as opposed to serving some private benefit. Is it, is it too much for me to ask that a president be free uh, of any obligations to investments uh, or investors or loaners? I mean, he's loaned a lot of money. The last disclosure I found was very interesting just a few days ago. I don't know if you saw that. The disclosure uh, concerning 
what his net assets are worth. A billion, 700 million, something like that. Did you see that? Did you see that I, article? I, I haven't taken a close look at it. I did, did see the disclosure he made, yeah. It's a lot less than he says he has. Well, again, I you know I don't I don't know what to read into that because it all depends on how right. you how you put the numbers. Right. And I I, I really don't know uh, whether it reflects the true value of all. That. There's an investigation going on on the ties between the Trump administration and China. Okay. We we uh, and and Russia. I'm sorry. We are looking at that very carefully, but the committees are looking at that very carefully. Mr. Mueller is going to be looking at it because that was the original touchdown here. The original touchdown was the Russians were influencing American elections. Elections. They're trying to influence it anyway. And with the, every one of the 13 uh, groups that are uh, dedicated and obligated to protect us in terms of our security came to that conclusion. I mean, this is not something you dreamt up, George, or I dreamt up, I can assure you. Now I want to see what the evidence is. So that's why they have hearings. That's why they have an investigation. Won't the tax returns have much to do about our investigation about those things? Well, they may, they may. It's hard to say. The business returns of Mr. Trump uh, might have some important clues, uh, that, but. It, it is very tricky because especially these, these very wealthy business people, they tend to do business through so-called intermediaries. Intermediaries are simply organizations set up in any country around the world right. that may have nothing to do with the country where you're actually doing business. Right. So if, if Which is if, part of the, what I held right, up before. Exactly. So part if, one of those of, investments. if one of his businesses is in fact has some kind of connection with Russian lenders or Russian entities or Russian government, it may not show up directly. It may show indirectly, and you'd have to do a lot of investigative work. Right. But the tax returns would at least begin to give you some leads to figure out how to do the investigation. If you're, uh, if you're uh, Mr. Mueller, uh, are you interested in his tax returns? Um, maybe. Uh, and, you know, the, the reality is that that the law uh, is not likely to give much access to Mr. Mueller in terms of the tax information. It right. does give a little bit of ability, uh, his ability to get the information. Can he subpoena those records? Well, he can subpoena private interests. So he could subpoena, obviously, the president. He right. could subpoena the tax return preparer right. uh, for the records. Uh, my guess is that's going to be a hard uh, battle. That is, if he subpoenas the president, there are going to be various privileges that are going to be asserted, and they're going to be fighting in court for a while on that one. Well, one of the, one of the things that's happened since 1924 was we got President Nixon's tax returns that way, did we not? Yes, but that was because uh, you... He owed money. <laughs> Congress, well, Congress used the law that you've been yeah. uh, 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 advocating uh, to allow the disclosure of President Nixon's tax information uh, in, in, in connection with an investigation. That and he w carried. wound up, he owed $500,000. About 500000 Yeah. Uh, is it possible, uh, in terms of what we do know uh, from records uh, that have been offered and disclosures that the, the president has put forth, is it possible... And I've heard this so many times, so let me ask an expert, that he paid no taxes over the last 10 years? I think it's quite possible, yes. And uh, how, did now, he do not, how would he have done that? Yeah, no, so I'm not you're not saying, saying yes, but you're yeah, saying it could, right. it's possible. It's certainly possible. How could he have done that? Well, he, he, it could done, and, and again, I'm not alleging any impropriety on his part necessarily. I, I mean, I, for right. all I know, he's, he's been filing his taxes in compliance with right. the law. But the law does allow taxpayers, especially real estate uh, taxpayers, a lot of deductions and benefits. This is a normal thing. That, that, as a normal thing. Right. That, that tends to shelter a good amount of income. And then in addition to that, uh, Mr. Trump, uh, President Trump has had a history of some business failings. And when businesses fail, usually there are some losses that are generated. And you could carry that forward. Which can be carried And you forward. could carry it forward to the point 
that you may not have to pay no taxes. Exactly, exactly. But isn't right. the whole tax system based upon everybody doing their part and their share? Yes. And look, there's built into the law that there's a lot of loopholes. Right. You could go right when most can go left, but you're not breaking the law. Right. So we need to review the tax code in and of itself yeah. to see if people are paying their fair share. Yeah. I don't think American people are going to be very happy if, in examining what we do know, we find out that the president's paid no taxes over yeah. 10 years. Yeah. Because if he, if he owed money and could carry it forward, he could do this legally. Yeah. But that doesn't make it right, does it? Yeah. Well, Congressman, you really hit on it exactly right. So the reason the public really deserves the right to look at the tax returns is, is certainly to check out all these conflicts that we've been talking about. But the larger reason is, as president, he's the taxpayer in chief. Right. We put so many responsibilities uh, on the president to make decisions on our behalf. And every, you know, he shares in filing a tax return an obligation that many Americans have to face. And Americans look at that and they understand that this is part of your character, part of your integrity. Right. They have a right to see how have you been filing your returns as a measure of what kind of person is it that's leading our country. That to me is the you know, the, the, the overriding reason why over the last 40 years, presidents of both parties have voluntarily disclosed their tax information. Well, I think that's very important. I hope folks were listening to what you just said. Let me ask you a question, George. What do you want to ask me? Since I'm a member of Congress, yeah. I'm a member of Ways and Means right. Committee, I'm going after the president's tax returns. Right. I think they're critical right. for us to establish. And if he's got nothing to hide, this is only right. clean the, the right. slate for him, it would seem to me. Yeah. I wanted to get it out there. Right. So you had some failures. We have failures. Right, right. So you didn't tell the truth five years ago. So right. what? You're the right. president now. You better be telling the truth. Right, right. Well, I would say two things. One is to do exactly what you have been doing, which is to keep on pressing the issue, pressing it in the committee, trying to get Republican support, trying to get the chairman on board and so forth. And of course, there's the Senate side also. They have the independent ability to do the same thing. So that's one thing. The other thing I would say is, I think Congress should think about this law that you've pointed out as a form of leverage over the president. It was created as a way to kind of create a better balance between the two branches. And Congress, by not using this law, is not fully using its ability to leverage against the president. Just as one example, recently you probably know that the president has, his Office of Legal Counsel has advised some of the executive branch officials that they don't need to respond to questions, oversight How about type that? questions coming from Congress, only selected types of questions would be responded to. Now, as my reading is, Republicans and Democrats in Congress are all upset about this. And it seems to me some of those Republicans should be told, well, look, if you're really upset about that practice, here's a law that you can inform the president right. about. 6103 and, part exactly. of the tax code. And, and <laughs> you know, if you don't show a little more cooperation to answer the questions that we have, right. we might well exercise this law. What do you expect the other citizens to do then? If okay. you're not accountable, Mr. President, exactly. why do you want me to be accountable? Yeah, exactly. Right. I have to stand by my reports. When I hand in a disclosure report, now we don't have to, as a member of Congress, submit our tax returns. I did that in an election four years ago. Uh, we got to do this so that we build accountability and people trust us. But you didn't ask me my question. So give me a tough question. Well, <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I, I mean, again, I think that you've been doing, you know, what you should be doing. And I would just keep on uh, pressing it. I, I think that some people have seemed to think that maybe Mr. Mueller will be able to get, uh, get the information. My reading of the law is, is kind of pessimistic on that scale. I don't think at the end of the day he's going to be able to get very much, if anything, and if he does get something, he may well not be able to disclose it to anybody and it probably isn't going to be the type of information that people would like to see. So I think that really your effort is critical. That's the effort that Congress had designed almost 100 years ago to give 
the American people the ability to get this kind of information. Yeah, there's no Democrat or Republican way to do your taxes. No, that's exactly right. And we are all accountable, particularly right. those of us in elected office, right. and the president is no less accountable. Right. To this country, and again, he it was, is not Cornelius Vanderbilt. Right, exactly. When he was asked the question about, well, what about the law, Mr. Vanderbilt? You have the law. <laughs> yeah. I have the power. Right, right. Because if that's the anthem here and the background, then American citizens may be joking about it, but then we lose. Everybody loses their credibility. Would yeah. seem to me. Yeah. So we're talking about transparency. We're talking about credibility. We're talking at the very basis. We cannot act nor be oligarchies. We cannot say all the power is at the top. This is not a democracy. So that we hand down what we feel you can know or what you should be doing. We'll tell you. This is not the kind of democracy we chose. The, the, the colonial folks that came here, this is not what we want and call a democracy. So it is a, a, a bridge uh, to what we believe in rather than an escape, an excuse, or living a loophole. George, Mr. Yen, thank you, Professor, for being here with us. Thank you, Congressman. Just to clarify a few more things. Yeah. I, I, I say to you, eyeball, eyeball, I'm going to continue my fight. It's gotten a few people angry. Uh, even some people who like me are angry at me at this. I'm going to do this because this is important to the continuing of our republic. There is no democratic or republican way to fill out your taxes or make them transparent when needed. And the law is on our side. Thank you for your, all of your help. Thank you. Thank you for... Uh, Watching the edition of To The Point, I want to thank my guest, George Yen, truthfully. Um, thank you for joining us today. You're a breath of fresh air. You have heard our thoughts. Now I'd like to hear what you think about today's show. So if you have any comments, concerns, questions, stay tuned. Our address, our phone number, our website, any kind of address, you can get hold of us. We're available. Thanks again for tuning in and see you again soon on To The Point.